I'm Troy Kirby with Linwood Today with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. On Wednesday, January 27th, the House Civil Rights and Judiciary Committee gave House Bill 1320 a public hearing. The legislation focuses on overhauling the effectiveness and accessibility of civil protection orders. So this is actually a really important bill for access to justice for those uh, victims and survivors of sexual assault, domestic violence, harassment. Uh, these protection orders are really important. Uh, and, and yet uh, we've seen there's inconsistencies and it's really important to align them. We've learned a lot of lessons during this current public health crisis uh, where people are not able to physically present themselves in court, uh, to uh, electronically file the orders, to have remote hearings, to have uh, electronic service. The service actually has been more effective. When you get a text message, this compliance has been higher rather than having to send a sheriff's deputy to personally serve. Uh, and then the relief and the remedies again. I think that the what this bill does is it takes best practices that we've seen throughout this pandemic it updates, it modernizes, it streamlines, and most importantly, in my opinion, it includes a definition of coercive control and it clarifies procedures that provide necessary guidance to our judiciary so that they can better understand and rule upon what are very unintuitive dynamics of um, gender-based violence. The challenge is, as, men, as several of you have, have quipped about, this is a 356-page, uh, highly technical bill that has significant policy and public safety in, implications it is simply the case that we've had not, not a real reasonable opportunity to review this bill and ensure that it does exactly as we all intend. Protection orders are a lifeline when community and systems have failed to protect. Tragically, there are potential barriers at every step. Getting to the courthouse, depending on where you live, your transportation or lack thereof, it could take an entire day. Once survivors make it to court, if they've asked for the wrong type of order, their initial request for protection and a hearing is denied, forcing them to start again and come back. We actually have uh, very, very strong support of the policy behind the, the, the bill. Uh, and we believe that, uh, Representative Graham, I don't think that there's fundamental changes to what the protection orders do and the, the, the rights that it provides. I, I think this re really is a modernization. Our position of others simply just trying to work through it. Uh, I, we would like to have uh, finished reading everything and gone back and digested it all. Uh, the bill, because of its size, is just difficult to do that. And we do see some changes. Um, we just want to make sure that uh, as we work through those, if there are other glitches, that there's a way to uh, highlight some of those. I, I really appreciate the work of the prime sponsor and, and those who've been behind it. As I listened to David Martin again, I, uh, just phenomenal work. We really think the bill is great. We just have concerns as we try to, 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 to swallow the enormity of the bill. I can think of one example. His name was is, for the sake of this testimony, Calvin. He's an elderly man who is seeking an anti-harassment order from his mentally ill drug addicted son who had been terrorizing him. We spent over a year going to and from court every, every couple of weeks attempting to obtain a full protection order. His son was unsheltered um, and we didn't have a known address so we were unable to serve him. We eventually were permitted to serve by publication but service by publication is extremely costly and he didn't have the funds to do that. We had to find resources to support him. We're testifying today to bring your attention to the need for this bill to reflect more holistically that youth are different and not like adults. You know, in the spirit of modernization, I think that's an area where this set of statutes could really match other areas where our state has modernized systems that respond to juveniles. On my 19th birthday, I was sexually assaulted by another University of Washington student that I had never met before that night. What started out as a night of celebration left me left bloody with bruises and a trauma that took me years to process and overcome. With the hopes to ensure my safety and regain some sense of security, I petitioned for a sexual assault protection order. The current protection order process is so discouraging that it's easier to just give up. Megan, um, I'm a law enforcement officer and have to deal with people who have suffered many of the same things that you have suffered. And my question to you is, how will this bill help me help them make the process easier. It's the technology expansion that allows people to um, attend hearings over the phone or through video is the number one thing that comes to my mind of how this bill will help. Um, so instead of people having to go down to the courthouse as many times as I had to, to attend a hearing that lasts for several hours, 
um, and being able to do it safely in their own homes and not having to confront um, the person that abused them. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by Linwood Today, covering the 2021 legislative session.